So it's been a while and I've been working on a few things that I can show off today. For example, I made another Android game, or made a smartwatch app, played with microcontrollers and made this. I have to say I really like that animation, I made it with SFML. I've been using it in some of my recent games and, well, in this video here. Speaking of my recent games, I made a new Android game, it's on the Google Play Store. It is basically a puzzle game where there are these numbers on the sides that tell you specifically how many connected tiles there are on the map. It's nothing special, these types of games already exist. I made it specifically for testing the portrait mode and some effects like the shutter effect that you saw already. As I said, it's on the Google Play Store if you would like to give it a try. It has a few levels, maybe more than a few. It has 40 levels, a level editor, and you can randomly generate levels if you'd like. But yeah, that's pretty much everything I have to say about that. Next up uh, is Wear OS, which is based on Android. And some more recent smartwatches have this operating system. And apparently it is quite easy to get any Android app to work on a watch. So I gave it a shot and well, it was actually quite easy. Since I'm using Android Studio now for Android projects, basically all I had to do was wirelessly connect the watch to my PC, click a button and OK on a few warnings. And that's pretty much it, it just works like any Android app. I'm not sure what I would do with this functionality, but either way it's pretty cool that it works quite well. Another update is out for my level editor, or to be precise, two updates, 1.3 and 1.3.1. These updates introduce a few quality of life features, mostly shortcuts. 1.3 also added OpenGL ES support. I tested that with the Android game I mentioned earlier, it is using tile maps and particle systems from the level editor. Anyways, I won't go into detail on every little thing that changed, you can check that out on my itch.io page if you wish. One new thing that I've also been playing around with is CMake, and while I'm still very new to that, I made a Windows Linux Android project template thingy which once downloaded can be right-clicked and opened with Visual Studio and immediately compiled for Windows or Linux. Or you could open it with Android Studio and compile for Android or optionally Wear OS, which as I said works just like Android. That's on my GitHub page. I've tested it with Chain Reaction and that's why you see Windows, Linux and Android download options there. That's pretty much everything OpenGL related that I've been working on. There is a new OpenGL 3D game I've been slowly developing. More information about that coming at some point in the future. I don't know yet when. 3D is quite complicated. I've also released four YouTube shorts covering Minecraft development with OpenGL. Something that I probably won't do again just because, first of all, it's portrait mode, which for my landscape footage is not good. And second, I had like 12 hours of footage that I had to compress down into 4 minutes. The last thing that I've been working on for quite some time is related to microcontrollers. So here we have an ESP32 microcontroller connected to a display, this is a 1 inch, 1.8 inch TFT display with the resolution 160 by 128. It also has an SD card slot as you can see up there. We have two buttons down here. And this is a rotary encoder meaning that it can rotate in either direction, basically infinitely. So once powered on, you can see it displays time, uh, up these numbers are debug information, uh, and we have this countdown until midnight currently. Uh, if we go, if we scroll to the right on the rotary encoder, here we have a simple menu, here we have apps, a store, settings, files, and resources. 
First of all, I have to talk a bit about how this whole thing works. So this microcontroller can have a few partitions which we can set through code. Specifically, I have two partitions here. These are OTA partitions, which are used for updating the firmware of the device over air. However, I'm not using it for that specifically. I'm actually using it to be able to flash new code onto another partition and then boot into that partition and use that code. And that's how these apps you'll see in a moment here work. These apps can be downloaded from the store that I have an icon there. Uh, we have some settings in general. We have files so we can browse the SD card if we wish for some reason, I don't know. And we have resources. So when it comes to system information here, it shows basically the CPU clock. It shows that it has two cores. This is the model with two cores as well. Uh, and it shows its flash size, which is four kilobytes for this model. Uh, it's also worth mentioning that it has around 300 kilobytes of RAM that we can use. We can go to the next tab here and we can see RAM, as I said, 300 kilobytes. It's currently, half of this is currently used. We can also have extra RAM connected to this microcontroller. I'm not using it, so it says zero here. And we can also check the SD card. In this case, I have a 16 gigabyte SD card. And well, as you could imagine, I don't need all of that space. So basically just a tiny chunk is used. So yeah, anyways, let's get to the cooler part, which is the apps and the store. So when I go into the store, as you can see, it connects to the server. And here we have a few programs that we can download. I've already pre-installed all of these so that we don't have to download them. For example, we can go into extra wallpapers and since I already installed them, you can see it says uninstall here. We can, uh, let's uninstall it here so that I can show it. So we have installed it, we can go back and we can install it and then it downloads it from the server, the whole app, all of the assets as well. Since this is wallpapers, it has more assets than usual. And it saves it all to the SD card and well, that's pretty much it. Then we can run the app. And as you can see, it successfully installed the app after like a half a minute. Here you can also see we have the require section. In this case, it requires an SD card slot and this microprocessor, which has a letter L on it, which means it doesn't require a lot of CPU power. So it's set to low. And we also have the size here. Apps can also have a description. In this case, I don't have any description set. And well, yeah, I'm gonna show all of the apps now. We can go into apps. So it's the next day and I really had amazing luck with recording this, especially since the SD card completely died and uploading to the board also stopped working. Really great luck. Anyways, hopefully it will work now. So if we, uh, as I mentioned, if we go into apps and then if we select that, as you can see, which it shows us all of the apps that we can run. And there are quite a few of them I've developed already, eight in total. So the cool thing about these apps is that since this microcontroller has two partitions, it can flash an app to the second partition and then run it. When developing an app, it is a completely new project. It has nothing to do with this original uh, operating system app thing that we're currently in. So I'll show you the apps now. So first of all, we have Blink, which is the most basic sketch where uh, a blue LED over here uh, starts to blink. It doesn't do much. It's just a testing sketch. And then we have extra wallpapers, uh, which has a few extra wallpapers that we can uh, set for the main operating system to use. We have Pong here, I made Tetris, uh, Pac-Man, we have a Wave Player, and we have some other apps that we'll get into later. 
Uh, Wave Player is really interesting because it uses Bluetooth. This microcontroller has Bluetooth as well, yes. It uses Bluetooth to connect to something like this, which is a Bluetooth speaker, right? So I'll show the demo of that in a moment. But first, let's check out, for example, extra wallpapers. So you press the select button and then it flashes. So you press the select button and then it flashes the extra wallpapers app onto the second partition and then it runs the second. <laughs> for example, Pong. And here it is, we can click on play and then we can play Pong. And well, that's basically it when it comes to Pong. And well, yeah, that's Pong. This is Pac-Man. So I'm back again and it's really cool that the SD card decided to work once more. So uh, while it still works, I'm gonna show two more apps, the music player and the extra wallpapers app that I didn't show because reasons. So first of all, the extra wallpapers app. So here we have a few wallpapers, as you can see. For example, I can set this wallpaper, press the select button, and then it will restart. And we have this wallpaper now, as you can see. And then we have the music player. If I run this one, this is a quite bigger app than all of the other ones. So it takes a bit more time to load. Anyways, we have a Bluetooth speaker right here. And it's gonna go into Bluetooth mm. mode. And mm. hopefully everything will work. We can go to connect to. It should list the speaker, there it is. It should connect, mm. there it goes. And then we should be able to play music or sounds through the speaker. Let's test it out. <coughs> and well, that works. So for a music example, I'll play 20,000 by Cold Breaks. So as you can see that works and we can also go into track offset and we can set a specific minute count or second count to skip the track to. So I set to two minutes and now we're at two minutes and if I uh, play it, we get an amazing sound right here. And there you have it. I think it's pretty cool when it works and it used to work perfectly all until now for some reason. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching and until the next one.